A Rouge Off Top Night Raid album review. Let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest album from A Rouge Off Top. She has been at it for a couple of years now. Pakistani singer, songwriter, and jazz minimalist. Uh, she has been at it since, I want to say, uh, the early 2010s. Now, she's been at it since the mid-2010s. Uh, her debut album, Bird Underwater, I had a lot of conflicting thoughts on. Uh, on one hand, the first half of this thing, I kind of felt was maybe be a little bit too minimalist for me, maybe it's a little bit too soft, but in the second half, uh, when she kind of doubled down on some of the more ambient sounds of the album and brought in a sense of mystique, I did slowly start to change my thoughts on her music and her follow-up album, Siren Islands. This was much more uh, my speed. This definitely stuck in the same very meditative, very ambient leaning direction, but this time backed it up with some field recordings, definitely some cleaner production as well, for a much more compelling, very therapeutic experience that was interesting to listen to. Now, by the time her Vulture Prince album uh, dropped, uh, all eyes were much more on her. A lot of these singles on this thing made it to pretty big playlists. Obama were looking at you. And I certainly saw the hype, and while I wasn't absolutely head over heels for it, this was by far her best work to date. The production sounded great, and most importantly, as far as her song structure goes, I was so much more impressed with what she was doing. Now, I haven't got a chance to chat about her stuff in the past, but this time around, I felt like it was necessary, mostly because she's gaining a lot of popularity. Secondly, a lot of the singles leading up to this thing, like Whiskey, are some of the best tracks she's ever put out, and most of this record is just really beautiful. This album starts off with I Not Heen, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Everything here from the plucked riff to the very hushed chanting of Rouge is absolutely stunning. I mean, talk about meditative. This is some of the most pristine, spiritual, and sobering music I've heard in any genre this year. And listen, this is patient music for patient people. But everything here from the patient drumming to the very lush harps to this this beautiful atmosphere that Arouge has painted really works for her stuff. Yeah, it's pretty breathtaking. Then we have Nagul up next. This one takes the turn for the slightly jazzier side of things. A lot of this album does. And it's something that she's toyed with since her very first album. It's not crazy to see her diving down this sort of chamber jazz route. And let me tell you, it is once again beautiful and this is a very stripped down very intimate record it is a rouge it is her vocals and a piano and that's about it and speaking of those vocals they have grown by leaps and bounds yes it's once again a very pensive very meditative jam but my god are the rewards here uh, as far as just sheer beauty goes uh, this is one of the nicest sounding albums i've heard this year also really love autumn leaves featuring james francis now this may be a very hushed very quiet very meditative release but on track Tracks like this that get a little jazzier, they're actually very busy. I love the percussion here, and the atmosphere to this entire record is simply intoxicating. Now, leading up to this, Rouge has said in an interview uh, that she was really inspired by the nighttime, and a lot of this album has that vibe to it. It's very nocturnal feeling, never really truly dark, though. Also, composer James Francis on keyboard on this track just sounds right at home. It ends up giving this track an even jazzier flair to it. Also, Bola Na is really impressive. This is like a chamber jazz posse cut, but in the best way. I mean, this track just brings in such a thick layer of mystique that I personally needed uh, quite a bit. And my god, the misty atmosphere and Arouge's very dreamy vocals. It is just intoxicating. Also, she brings to the table more mother on this track. And I don't know if this is a hot take or not, but I think this track is cooler than anything on her latest release. Yeah, the pacing on this track is immaculate. And if that wasn't enough, uh, vibraphonist uh, Joel Ross is also on this track to add even more mystique. Mystery and wonder as well. This might be my favorite deep cut here. And, you know, honestly, I don't have that much bad to say. Uh, I mean, some of these tracks do go on maybe a minute or two long, and there are a couple of blips on the radar later on in the album, like Saki, for example, featuring Vijay Yer. And up to this point, she's pretty much nailed all of the features that have been on this record, but I just kind of find it infuriating that the one person who shows up uh, so far and uh, honestly kind of phones in the performance is somebody that she's released an album with. And yet, there are a few very nice, very pristine moments on this track. 
yeah, the atmosphere is beautiful, and some of these piano melodies are absolutely stunning, but overall, this is not either one of their best performances. It's beautiful from a distance, but, like, look a little closer, and it's seven minutes long. Also, Zamin featuring Mark Anthony Thompson. I feel like a rouge really phoned in this finale. This has been just such a lush, detailed, intricate, and intimate album so far. But then I hear Rouge's vocals, and I'm telling you, like, this is one of her least captivating performances in a really long time. It just does not progress at all, and compared to other tracks here, this just seems, I don't know, really phoned in. But the rest of this record is just some really great, interesting chamber folk and chamber jazz. <clears throat> and easily some of a Rouge off top's best stuff. Like Late Night Reprise, once again, we have another weird chamber pop sort of posse cut. Meev Gilchrist, Khaki King, also Cautious Clay on this thing. And yeah, this is one of the freakiest and formless tracks here that's really hard to describe. It's also one of the busiest tracks here, and that shouldn't be that shocking with just how many people are on this track. But Arouche does a really amazing job of bringing everybody together with her very silky vocal. And there's just such a loose, free-spirited feel to this track, I really dig it. And Rat Kirani may be the best track that Arouge has ever put out. I mean, I'm a diehard Sade fan, definitely getting some old-school Sade vibes here. It's a steamy late-night battle with an immense, dreamy atmosphere. It's jazzy, it's folky, and Arouge's performance is otherworldly. And so far, this has been a very meticulous album. This track is no different. Every harp, every keyboard is right where it should be. And I have a lot of the same feelings on Whiskey. I think it's one of the better tracks she's ever put out. And while Arouge's music has always been shrouded in a lot of mystery, a lot of the songs on this recording are some of her most forward-facing, revealing yet. Yeah, this track is stunning. The harp, the waves of production, the cloudy atmosphere, the dreamy pianos, all brought together by Rouge's very smoky vocal performance. Yeah, this album is pretty damn beautiful. And yeah, like I said, a lot of these tracks, you know, they're pretty beefy. Most of them are five to six minutes long. A couple of them do go on a little bit too long. Also, a few blips on the radar in the second half that kind of disappoint me. But overall, yeah, this is absolutely Rouge's best work. She's constantly growing and trying new things and this album especially its atmosphere is absolutely intoxicating i am feeling a very very strong seven on this album but let me know what you all think down below if you like the video be sure to give us a like give us a subscribe and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future and until next time have a great day friends